Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the Love is in the Air Stamps and Dies and then the Bitty Buzzwords uh, Be Mine. This one is the Kindness Inside Sentiments and I cannot tell you how much I love this. Um, it's just got such great sentiments with it, um, you know, about being a kind person and appreciating people in your life. And I really, really like that one. Um, so basically I had planned to use the, uh, stamps and dies. So I'm just laying out all of my stamps to, um, make sure that I can die cut them. I had to kind of move them around because I forgot about the die cutting at first, you know, cause it's still pretty new to me. Um, so I needed to make sure that I would have enough area in between each stamps that uh, I wouldn't be cutting into one that was right next to it. Um, but then when I was doing this, this is so silly. <laughs> so when I was doing this, I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so hard to get a good impression of all of these images. You know, I'm going to have to stand up and CPR it and all that jazz. And then I remembered, and you're going to see the moment, which I remember right on screen. I'm, I literally put my hand up. Um, Maybe I cut it out. I might have cut it out. But anyway, I had remembered that Honeybee had sent me one of those like stamp aids. Um, and pretty much the premise of it is it replaces your CPR stamping. It's um, kind of got like a soft felt underneath it and you hold it in your hand. It almost looks like um, when you play air hockey, you know, the not the puck, that's the thing you had, the part you hold in your hand. Um, it almost looks like that. Uh, no, see, I did leave it in. Um, and it's supposed to help give you really good pressure uh, so that you stamp evenly with minimal amount of effort. Like you still have to push down, obviously, as you would with any stamp. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I was a little bit skeptical. Um, so it has like a little cap that goes over the felt to keep it nice. And so I was a little skeptical and turns out pleasantly surprised. Um, it really worked very well and it was super easy. Um, so I may be done with the Sherry Carroll CPR method. I may just use this. Uh, and I did it again for stamping the rest of my pieces parts. Um, and was just as amazed the second time that it worked just as well. Um, so sometimes that's nice. Um, you know, you get a little inadvertent surprise. You don't think, you know, really, any, it's not something that I would have purchased. I'm going to be honest with you. I would not have gone on my way to purchase it. I would have just CPR'd method it for the rest of my life. Um, but it was something that they had sent me. And so I gave it a try and bam, um, I'm a believer. Um, I'm sticking with it, I think. So um, I have all of these pieces that I am stamping and coloring. I will warn you that because there is so much to color, I did have to speed it up a little bit. Um, I tried to leave everything in there. You know, I don't like cutting that those things out. So I would rather have it all be in there um, at a little bit of a faster speed where you can control the video on your YouTube um, where if you need to see the coloring in detail, you can certainly slow it down. Obviously that probably will change my rate of speech. Um, but just mute it and put on some good music. Like you'll be fine. So, but I, I just couldn't fit it all into one video in a manageable amount without speeding up the coloring. Um, so yeah, I decided that I was going to do this adorable little birdhouse, um, with a brown, uh, roof and a brown base. And then I was going to color the birdhouse red. I knew I wanted to do my birds blue, um, that I already knew. And I was kind of on the fence about the colors of the flowers. Eventually I settled on, um, like a bright orange cause I thought that would look really nice with the blue and then the blue background that we're going to do. Um, so that's how I kind of came up with my color scheme. And then the greens, I just went with my go-to greens, which are yellow greens. Those are the ones that I prefer. They're just a little bit brighter. Um, and you know me, I like bright colors. I don't wear them, but I like the color with them. 
So yeah, that's the game plan. We're just going to go through, do a little bit of coloring, a little bit of chatting. Um, for those of you who were in the path of Snowstorm Landon, I was too. Yes, I was. Um, so it's interesting because I live in Ohio and obviously we're used to getting snow. Snow is not um, something that is new to us. But they were predicting that this snowstorm was just going to be wild crazy. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I don't know that it was any worse than the one that we had on Martin Luther King Day. <laughs> but I think the biggest concern was um, Wednesday night into Thursday, they were calling for rain. Uh, so it was going to rain and then the temperature was going to drop and then it was going to snow. So the concern was the ice. And that did happen. But I don't think it happened like they thought it was going to happen. Um, so we talked about in my last video um, that I was a little bit concerned about the snow day. What we ended up doing was kind of dividing and conquering. Um, obviously, we're both first responders. We're both essential employees, however you want to look at that, um, which means when something like this happens, we both have to go to work. We do. It's not our choice. We have signed up for this life. Um, and so, and there's also both of us have the opportunity to be held over, um, to not be able to leave at the end of our shift because emergency services are needed. So we were trying to make arrangements. We sent um, Nathan to his dad's mom's. So my ex-in-laws, um, they went there. He went there. And then um, Caitlin went to my mom's because Eric's parents, uh, which they everybody has been wonderful in helping out with the kids. Our moms are splitting babysitting duty um, so that we can work. <laughs> and um, I, she lives an hour away and she lives right in the snow belt. So I was like, it's not an option. She can't come out here. Like, I mean, unless she's going to come out here and she's going to camp out for two days. And like, who are we to put that kind of expectation on somebody? So I just told her, I was like, don't come on Thursday. Like, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, but the concern was that I would go into work on Wednesday night and then I would get held over on Thursday. We already knew there was going to be no school. And Eric had a double. He had to work 16 hours that day. So it was like, who will watch our children? <laughs> who will watch our children? Um, and so my, what ended up happening, I did get held just a little bit. It was silly. I'm going to be honest. So um, let's go back to the beginning. On Tuesday, I stopped and picked up a bread and milk because we were halfway through our loaf and we were halfway through our half gallon. And I knew that we were going to be like kind of cooped up for two days with the snow um, and I didn't want to have to go back out. So, um, I picked up bread and milk after I picked up peanut from school. And then on Wednesday, after I picked him up from school, um, he's had a, a, a thing with his grades. And so we had to have like a little after school special here in our kitchen, um, with all of us talking to him about his grades. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> So I went into work Wednesday night. When I went into work Wednesday night, it was raining and it was about 40 degrees. So my my mom is Wednesdays. They've split up the days, which is wonderful. Um, that way everybody gets a little bit of a break. So my mom was Wednesday, but Eric was off of work. So that gave her a little bit of a break. So he was home with her on Wednesday um, and I went to work. Like I said, it was raining. At about 10 p.m., the rain switched over to snow. Now, I work in a place that dispatches for multiple jurisdictions, multiple cities. And every city had their service department that was already on shift. They were ready to go. They were salting right out the gate. And... Um, they had it pretty much under control, but it was really slushy until maybe like midnight. It was really, it wasn't solid. We're going to go back to the card real quick here. 
Um, so for the birds, I knew I wanted to do them like a bright blue, because uh, you know blue is my boyfriend and I love him. Um, in order to have some dimension and get some differentiation between the layers of feathers, um, I went in and I did my shading like I normally do, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, but you want to just put in a line, just a line, and you'll see, it's easiest to see on the top um, wing here, that you want to put just a line on each one of those feathers. So just a line of color. And then for the ones that are on top, I kind of extended them out a little bit past the black line that's already drawn there. Um, for my darkest color, I'm only going to put it on the furthest parts. So like the, the deepest parts of it. And then I'm going to work my way back out to my lightest color. Those little lines, okay, where your the tip of your marker is barely touching your little bird is going to help you get so much dimension. It's going to look crazy when you're doing it, um, but it really will help you get a ton of dimension and help those feathers kind of stand apart from each other. Okay, and one other thing to note on the card. You saw me color in the birdhouse red. That's what I thought that I was doing. I didn't end up liking it once I started coloring the flowers. I didn't like it. It wasn't bright enough. So don't, you're not married to it. Okay? Understand that. If you don't like it, you don't have to start all over again. That's where the wonderful things of Copic being transparent comes in. If you pick a color that is in the same area, like a, a tertiary color, either, you know, like for red, I could have gone orange, I could have gone yellow, I could have gone pink. All of those would have been perfectly fine and they would have tinted it. I went with the hot pink because, well, I like pink. Um, and I thought it would look really pretty with the orange, but I did not recolor that whole thing. You saw I just picked one color and I just went over everything. All of my shading is still there. All of my dimension is still there. None of that has changed. We have just kind of glazed the color, um, which is a great trick to have in your arsenal, especially when you're doing as much coloring as we are here and you don't want to have to start all over again because I surely did not want to have to do that. So where were we? Um, okay, so it didn't get like solid ice until like midnight one in the morning. And like I said, they were out there, they were salting, they were plowing. Um, the concern was that the snow was falling so quickly in such a short amount of time that they weren't going to be able to um, keep the roads clean. With Caitlin going to my mom's, like we packed her as if she was going to have to spend the night because I have a Ford Fusion. I do not have four wheel drive. I do not have a big fancy SUV or pickup truck or anything that's gonna get me through any significant amount of snow. Um, <laughs> so there was a chance I was not gonna be able to get there to get her. And my parents have not installed their base of their car seat in yet, so they could not have brought her to me. So um, I come, I, I go to work, it's actually was not too bad. I mean, we had a couple of accidents, but really most people just kind of sheltered in place. They didn't, they didn't go out. A lot of people had off work and things were closed down. Um, like I said, they were, I mean, they were thinking it was going to be wild and crazy. Um, but then, so Thursday morning, I've already given my radio away. I am logged out. I've gathered up my stuff and I'm getting ready to walk over to, um, my drawer, my little cubby to put my things away. And our supervisor was like, wait, wait, wait now. We're going to hold you guys for half an hour, 45 minutes, just to be sure we can make it through rush hour. Like, man, you couldn't have told me this 15 minutes ago, but whatever. So I stay my half an hour. Um, I'm able to make it home. Now, you tell me if you can relate to this because it is <laughs> the city that I work for is not well, wait, okay, now we got to talk about this. We, we got to go back to the card. We'll come back. Um, so here I have the Wispy Cloud stencil and I've put my Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back, which is dry as repositionable. You do not want to put this down while it's wet or you will glue your stencil to your card. Um, but I use that to hold my stencils down. 
Here I have managed to get some ink on my finger and I've spread that to my card. I'm not overly concerned about it because I got a lot of die cuts I'm putting on here. Can you hear my dogs in the back barking at nothing? They're barking at nothing. Just to be clear, there's nothing happening and yet they're barking at it. Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> hopefully they settle down here in a second. Um, so I have some Salty Ocean. That's the only color I'm going to use. I'm going around the edges. And then you can use a stencil a couple of different ways. Um, you can use it to make darker clouds. There are die cuts that match these, so you can kind of intermingle them. Uh, but something to note, you want to mask the other clouds um, so that you don't get ink where you don't want it. Now, I knew this area where I put my fingerprint that I wanted to have that cloud be a bit darker. So I'm starting there and I'm going to work my way out. I'm eventually going to cover this whole slimline area with the clouds, but I just wanted to let you know um, the way that I found that I liked using it best is not necessarily coloring in the clouds all super dark, um, but I liked when I brought it in from the top, so like the fluffy part of the cloud, and I didn't go all the way down to the bottom. So it just kind of left this open area and you'll see um, some of the later clouds, what I'm talking about. Uh, but since we're in the middle of story time, I just wanted to address it while we were already, you know, here. So I, I really, really enjoyed using the stencil and I can totally see doing this with like some sunset colors or something like that, just some really soft clouds. Um, I'm a fan of this stencil. I think we'll be seeing it again. Okay, so back to, so the city that I work for is not, they're not a, a poor city, but they're not a affluent city. They're somewhere in the middle. They're a suburb somewhere in, in the middle. And I would venture to say the same thing is true of the city I live in. They are right next door to each other, the city I work in city I live in. Let me tell you what the significant difference is. The city that I work in, when you are driving through their city during a snowstorm or during any point at the winter, honestly, it is like they have their service crews out 24 seven. Their streets are clean. They are free of snow. They are free of ice. It could be, in fact, a spring day where the birds are chirping and, you know, you can hear the, the singing, you know, there's, here comes the sun, you know, all that jazz. Like, that's how nice the roads are. And then there is a clear delineation. <laughs> there is a clear delineation between the city I work in and the city I live in their boundaries meet on one road, okay? The east side of the road is the city that I live in. The west side of the road, it, well, this direction that they had, it's actually, I guess the north side would be the city I, I work in and the south side would be the city I live in. But there is a line in which you leave a beautiful spring day where birds are chirping and there is singing and the roads are clear and it's like there has been no precipitation whatsoever to basically Antarctica. Okay. You can see penguins walking by. You can't see the road at all. On your way home, you get to play, am I on the road? Am I in the ditch? Because you can't actually tell. There is a extremely thick layer of ice there has been no salt. There has been no plowing. Everybody's just out here in this free-for-all trying to make it down the street, okay? It infuriates me. <laughs> it infuriates me because there's no reason for it. Even if you are a city that has financial problems, and I'm saying maybe you can't afford to pay them overtime to come in and salt overnight. I get that. I understand. I worked for a very poor city for a very long time. Um, so I totally, I totally get where they're coming from. But on, you know, 
whatever, seven, eight o'clock in the morning when their shift starts, could we maybe get them out there putting salt down? Could we maybe get them out there plowing when you're paying them straight time, which would be the same time that you would pay them for a normal day's work if it was a spring day in July? Like, help me out here. I'm just trying to make it home, y'all. Um, here, what you see me doing is I'm putting the Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back of my die cuts. This is going to help me arrange them without them moving all over the place. They're, like I said, it's repositionable, so as long as it's not wet when you put it down, it's just going to be tacky and you'll be able to peel it back up. And I find I have a much easier time getting my layout together. It's less frustrating for me. I guess I should put it that way. It's much less frustrating for me when I'm not knocking the die cuts all over the place. Okay. So anyway, after my being held for whatever, half an hour, 45 minutes, and... Um, you know, transporting myself to the North Pole to drive home, uh, I finally make it home. To which my wonderful husband has, Caitlin is still sleeping. He has Nathan keeping an eye on her. He has snow blowed the driveway so that I can get into the driveway. So you know he had to get up so early to do that because I, I mean, he, Nathan comes home at 6.30 in the morning. So he bare minimum got up that early in order to get out there and do the snow blowing. Um, he's just, he's, he's wonderful and he does so much for all of us. Um, but so he got the, the driveway snow blowed. I stay up to take care of Caitlin. Normally I come home and I go right to bed, but I stay up to take care of Caitlin so that he can finish doing his things, you know, cause he's got to go in to work for 16 hours now and he's going to take he's going to drop the kids off on his way um so that I don't have to do that also because he has a truck and it's a little easier for him to get around in the snow and then he's going to go into work so we get that done hugs kisses everybody goodbye and then I get into bed I get up at three o'clock and I call my mother to see how things are going she was like, it's good. Dad's going to go out there and snow blow the driveway so that you can get in, which I got to tell you, my dad's in his 70s. I'm not a big fan of that, um, but also he's very stubborn and won't listen. Eric almost always snow blows their driveway when he can. Um, he does ours, then he loads up our snow blower and goes down and does my parents, um, which he actually did on Friday. So my dad um, did do a, a smaller section and then he cleared a spot in the back for the dog um so I'm like okay I have to dig my car out of the driveway because mind you the whole time I've been sleeping it's still snowing snow still coming down we actually ended up getting just under a foot of snow in 24 hours we got 10 inches um and so I needed to dig my vehicle out um I did I shoveled the deck for the dogs I dug my car out. I tried to get out of the driveway. It was not enough digging. I had to shovel more snow. Uh, and I'm not a particularly active person. So it was kind of, you know, it was a thing for me to be out there shoveling. I'm just saying. Um, and so finally I dig myself out enough to go get Caitlin. Um, and my ex-husband, Nathan's dad, brought him home uh, from his parents' house. And then pretty much I just stayed in the house for the next two days. <laughs> That's it. I just stayed. I just, I just stayed here. I didn't have to work. Um, so we hung out, we watched some Disney movies. I watched Luca for the first time. It's very cute. I watched Moana for the 67th time. It's still adorable. Would recommend. Um, and that's what we did. So, um, yeah, we made it through. I would be interested to know if other people got more than we did because it didn't seem like it really lived up to the hype. Um, like, that's not a challenge, Mother Nature. I'm not inviting you to come back at me with more snow. I'm just saying this one wasn't necessarily... Or maybe they were just so well prepared, it didn't really seem like it was a thing. Here on the card, what you can see me doing is I didn't have to color in all of the white portions of the dye, um, because I had such a light background, they blended in, but anywhere where they overlapped another, um, dye, I did try to color them in so that they blended a little bit better. And then I put some shimmers on it because shimmers, there's no further explanation. And then that's it. That's the, the, the whole card. 
and I'm really happy with the way that it came out. It gives me a little bit of spring while I wait these next six weeks, and I'm excited for that. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I will catch you on the next video. Bye.